All right, if you want smooth colors and beautiful gradients and easy blending of colors, it all starts with what you do before you even paint. Let's talk about the materials first. And we're gonna start with the canvas that's over my shoulder. This is an everyday cheap canvas, probably what you're using. It's a double primed gesso canvas and it's a medium textured canvas, which means it's got some toothing on it, which I'm gonna show you in some close up macro shots here. The two thing basically means it's got these little divots and teeth in it, which allow the paint and paintbrush to grab onto something, which is great for painters out there, but this can lead to more patchy or streaky designs if you don't do proper prepping with your canvas. To alleviate this, we want to apply one more layer of gesso. Now, if you're a brand new painter out there, I really recommend that you use a light gray gesso. Just take some white gesso, mix it with one drop of black gesso, and mix it on a paper plate with a sponge brush. Now apply this to your canvas. Now just to let you know, you don't need a smooth consistency of that light gray. It can be light gray, and then light, light gray, and then dark gray in some areas. This will help with something later on. But what this gesso is doing is it's giving us one additional protective layer and separation layer from the cotton duck. You see, the cotton in the canvas, or if you're using linen, is gonna act like a sponge and soak in that color really fast when you apply it on top of this. When you have that additional layer, it's actually gonna make it so the paint can go smoothly or more smoothly across, okay? And this is really gonna help you out. Now listen up, if you're a brand new painter, once you're done applying your gesso coating, by the way, I made mine darker so it's easy for you to see on this video. You're welcome, by the way. I think of my community first. You need to make sure that your gesso is 100% completely dry, okay? Generally, depending on how much of an application you put on and the environment that you live in, generally takes anywhere from, let's just say 15 minutes to 45 minutes to completely dry. The best way to check is check all four zones with your fingers. One, two, three, four. If there's no paint on there, you're good to go. Two things really quick before we move on. Let's stick with the gesso. If you're the type of painter out there that wants to have extremely smooth blending of colors or have those extremely smooth, beautiful gradients going on in your painting, yeah, you can add additional layers of gesso. Each additional layer of gesso you add on top of your dried layer of gesso is gonna take away from that toothing we mentioned earlier. And it's gonna give you a smoother, finer surface that you'll be painting on, which is going to allow you to achieve beautiful blending and smooth colors. The other thing that I want you to be aware of is you may be asking, wow, do you already have a primed gesso canvas? It might be single, double, triple, or the almighty quadruple. But Sometimes that doesn't matter depending on the canvas. You need to check out and test your canvases first. While it might have double or triple layers of gesso on it, they may be sparse or cheap layers. Generally, the more you pay up, the better the gesso coating. So you could possibly skip this. What I'm trying to say is you need to test before you start painting for a final product. But I do always recommend putting at least one layer of light gray gesso on, because trust me, it'll help you. All right, let's move on to the next step, and that is the liquid foundation that you will be applying to your dried gesso painting surface. Now, the liquid foundation, or the liquid medium base, serves two functions. When you apply it across your entire painting surface, it's gonna keep that painting surface wetter for longer. The second purpose that it serves is since it's wetter for longer, we can now blend colors directly on the canvas as opposed to our mixing palette. And this is going to allow us to easily achieve beautiful blending of colors and smooth and vivid gradients that you're trying to achieve. Now, when it comes to the liquid foundation or your liquid base mediums, you need to make sure that you're using this correctly. First of all, you wanna make sure that you give it a good shake. And I do mean a good shake for like 30 to 60 seconds. Pretend you're a cocktail shaker or if no one's looking. Yeah, there we go, got it perfect. You want it a nice, creamy, smooth white. Don't look at me that way. <laughs> when it comes to correctly applying your liquid foundation or your liquid base to your painting surface, I personally just like to use a paper plate pour some of that medium out onto that plate and use a one inch brush and start doing some broad strokes across your painting surface. 
don't worry if you have too much or too little because we can easily correct this. Once you have a general application, then go over to your clean and dry two inch brush and really work it in. Push it all the way across your entire canvas using cross strokes. Don't be afraid to grind it in. And once you have it applied across your entire canvas, you can then go from top to bottom with big long strokes and left to right with big long strokes. This is going to ensure that we've got an even and smooth application. Now, a few things to look out for is, since we have that gray gesso on here, you're going to easily see if you have too much liquid foundation in one area or the other, or if you have none in one area or the other. Make sure to look at your canvas or painting surface from different angles, because the light will help you indicate where you may be having too much or too little. The other thing I want you to be worried about is since you're gonna be most likely painting on a canvas or something that has rails and edges, when you push that liquid medium off to the side, it can ball up. So I recommend take your paintbrush, go up and down around the edges or a paper towel to remove it so that way it doesn't blob onto your painting later or worse, your clothes or your floor. And here we are, this is what you should have. This is a perfect even application that's consistent all the way through our painting surface. Now the best way to check to make sure that you got it right is just take your four fingers and touch in the four zones and your fingers should look like a crime scene uh, fingerprint. If there's no paint on it or not enough, that means you need to apply more to your canvas. And if there's big blobs and globs all over your fingers, that means you have too much and you need to work it off. Let's talk about if you don't have enough. That's easily correctable by just applying more liquid foundation. Work it in with that one inch brush and then spread it out with that two inch brush and test again. If you have too much paint, which is usually indicated by not being able to see a little bit through the canvas to that gray gesso underneath. A key reason why we use gray. If you have a full coating of white, I generally like to clean off my two inch brush and just go across the entire canvas and slowly remove what I need. If you have a full primer foundation on there, you can take a shop towel and easily wipe off the excess and then work it in smoothly with a clean and dry two inch brush and then you will be good to go. All right, let's move on to the colors and what you will be applying to the canvas. We're gonna use for this example here, something that every landscape painter is gonna paint at one time or another, a rising or setting sunset sky which means we're gonna use the colors of yellow, red, and blue. But before we get into applying the colors, I wanna take a quick moment to do a little self-promotion for me. I know I caught you right here. I have a quick starter PDF that you can download that goes over the best beginner supplies to get you into oil painting for things like this that you can do here. It goes over what to buy, but more importantly, it goes over what to avoid so you don't waste your money. You can help me out by using the link down below and download yours today. Let's get started with our colors. We're gonna be using a yellow, a red, and a blue. And we wanna make sure we get even applications across our brush. Allow me to show you on the palette. We're gonna use a clean and dry one inch brush. Now, if it's dirty with a liquid foundation, that's fine. Just wipe that off on a paper towel and it's okay if you have a little bit of extra residue on the bristles. It's not gonna ruin anything. Now, we wanna make sure that we work from our least dominant color to our most dominant color when we first put on our application, which means we're gonna work from yellow to red to blue. Let's start with yellow and applying color to your brush. I personally like to pull the color down on my mixing palette and then turn my brush as I tap and pull the color through. This ensures that I have an even application across my paintbrush. This is key to eliminate streaks that you may not want on your canvas. Now it's up to you on where you want your color or light source to illuminate from. We're not gonna get into that because this isn't a painting tutorial. This is about how to have beautiful blending of colors and awesome gradients on your canvas. Now from here, just apply your yellow color. I like to use circular strokes and cross strokes to establish my light source and work out. Now remember, to get beautiful gradients and smooth colors, you have to apply the appropriate amount of color, which means you can't go too little and you can't go too much because you need the colors to blend properly. But the nice thing is you'll be visually able to see that due to the light gray gesso and the liquid white top. Now pull the colors out to where you want and leave a nice separational white gap for our next color. We're gonna move on to our next dominant color, which will be red. Use a clean, dry one inch brush and do just on the outer edge of that yellow, the red that you wanna blend in. 
Now, when this red hits the liquid white foundation, it's going to lighten up that hue color into a beautiful lightish pink color. If you want this color to be dark, once you've blended in your colors, you can just add more red on top, but still use the one inch brush. And if things are starting to look a little streaky or a little blobby, don't worry. We're just putting in a foundation of color that we're gonna blend into smooth colors in just a moment. The next color we're gonna move on to is our blue. I do recommend cleaning off your one inch paintbrush here if you haven't already. Then move on to that blue and work from the top of the corners down right to where that red is. But again, leave a nice gap of white in between. Blue is an extremely strong color, so only use a little bit when you pull down and tap into an even application on your paintbrush. Now you can blend in all your colors into a beautiful gradient using a large and clean and dry two inch brush. We still wanna work from our least dominant color to our most dominant color. So we're gonna work from our yellow to our red to our blue. Take some time here and really blend in your colors. Now I recommend using cross strokes and I do recommend using a little bit of force. Use all those bristles in that paintbrush and work from the center, generally where your light source is, all the way out to where you wanna pull that color to. Work the yellow in really good till you're happy. Then we can move on to the dividing part between the yellow and red, where we left a little bit of that white gap. And spend some time here with some cross strokes, blending that red down and into that yellow. That way you get a beautiful blending of colors that transitions from a red to a little bit of a burnt orange into that yellow. And again, you can pull this color in any direction you want. I'm just doing a basic kind of like banding of color here to give you an example of a normal gradient, but you do what you want. Once you have that burnt orange color that you like blended in, then work that red in, use a little bit of force, and then lighten up depending on how you wanna pull that color. Now your paintbrush may be a little dirty here if you put on a lot of paint. For me, I didn't really do that much paint because in my mind, this is more of a sunset, but if you did a sunrise, you might have brighter colors. I would probably recommend work off the excess paint from your two inch brush. Just work it off in a blue shop towel or if it's really dirty, clean it off completely. But from here, you can work from your red to your blue. Now blue is the most dominant color and overtakes everything completely. So work in a small section first. Start with right where that white band is separating the blue and the red and slowly start pulling the red up into the blue until you get a beautiful blending. This will help prevent the blue from overtaking the red. Then when you get the blending that you want, slowly and lightly with less pressure, pull down that blue into the red with light cross or X strokes and work out and pull that color where you want. When you finally have it where you want and you get that beautiful smooth transition of blending of colors, you can then wipe off the excess color if you need to, again, if your paint's heavy, or you can just work up going from left to right to smooth out the remaining blue so everything looks good across your painting surface. Now you should have something that looks exactly like this, a beautiful blending of colors that creates a beautiful sky gradient. But I wanna talk about two things really quick. Let's talk about colors. If you want more rich, saturated, bright, and vivid colors on your canvas, if you're a more advanced artist, just do what we did, but just apply more color at the beginning. But if you're watching this video, you're probably really struggling as a brand new painter. Now that we have this and you still want those bright, rich colors, we can just add to our template of what we have. Just take your one inch brush, and for the example here, I'm just gonna use a little bit of yellow and spots that may seem, you know, light or sparse, or I may see some of the undertone of the gray or liquid white. I'm just gonna add more color that I can blend in again with my one inch brush and then move on to my two inch brush. And it doesn't take much effort, but now that I have this entire template here, it makes it so much easier for me as a brand new painter to visualize what I'm doing. And that is a powerful tool. Add the rest of this color in here because I pulled it out of the tube and I might as well not waste it. The next thing I wanna talk about is why I personally leave white spaces between my transition of colors. If you're a brand new painter, you might struggle with the transition of colors when you put colors that don't mix well together that happen in nature. For example, if I took yellow and blue and put them next to each other, that space that it's gonna have is gonna turn into a green, which normally doesn't occur in normal skies in nature. So I like to leave that white divider there so I can slowly pull those colors together. 
I basically have more control, which is why I like it. Another reason why I like it, at least for skies, is those white gaps actually give off the appearance and the illusion of an atmosphere in my sky. It adds more density and it adds the illusion of sometimes far and away clouds or just like mist or, you know, any type of moisture in the air. You don't have to do that step. You can pull your colors right next to each other so that way you do get more of a gradient transition. But I just want to make you aware of those things and why I do them and I recommend new painters do them. So I was just taking a look at the footage of what I just filmed and the white bands of separation in person are extremely minimal. It looks like a natural transition of the atmosphere. However, on camera, you can actually see a strong divide. So I figured I'd show you really quick how you could correct that if you wanted to pull the colors closer together, okay? Since I like my yellow, I'm just gonna pull my red down into my yellow and add a little bit more of a streak up here. It's gonna be nice and strong, but it's okay because I can blend that through all the way down. Just gonna do some light cross strokes, bring it to right where that yellow is, then start going up towards my blue and put my foundation color up in here, rotate my brush, and I'm just gonna leave it like that and transition over to my two inch brush. With the two inch brush, I'm gonna pull that color down into my yellow first because it's my less dominant color and slowly just start blending everything here nice and softly till I work away that white atmosphere line and get the transition colors that I want. Now we can move from the red to the blue and I'm gonna take some more time here because the blue is such a strong color. I really wanna make sure I pull the red up into the blue first, then I can pull the blue down towards the red to blend into a soft lavender color. Now I'm gonna push a little harder here, eliminate that white line, do some long strokes and eliminate any unnecessary lines. There we go. <laughs> All right, we have one last step and we wanna make this super smooth and consistent and even all the way across, which means we wanna use the two inch brush to get nice level paint strokes. We're gonna start at the bottom and I like to do a cross stroke just like this and then slowly and lightly work my way up. I'm not using much pressure here at all. In fact, I don't even really have to look at the canvas. I just wanna what? I just wanna let you work all the way up to even out all the paint strokes that we have. If I could give you one tip when it comes to evening out your paint brush strokes is don't put a lot of pressure. What's going to happen are the bristles are going to bend and then snap as they come off the canvas, which means these edges here are going to get color removed as you work off. Keep your paint strokes even as you go across, but then as you get near the edges, just lighten up and feather a tiny bit and you will have perfect results just like this. Hey, Post Edit Wild here. I only spent a few seconds to a few moments blending these colors in. However, when you do this, just like I'm going to show you here, take a few extra moments and a few minutes. It's okay to really take your time and blend these colors in like you see here if you want those beautiful, smooth blending of colors and awesome, smooth gradients. There's one huge piece of information I wanna bake into your mind that's just as important as the tutorial we went over. And that's for you to stop comparing your work to what you see on YouTube and Instagram and other photos. I get asked all the time, how do I make my paintings so smooth with the blending of colors and gradient transitions? Well, I just showed you, but honestly, it's not as smooth as you think because painting in itself inherently has texture to it. The painting surfaces that you're painting on, like canvas and linen, are gonna have toothing and texture built into them naturally. Same with the painting materials that you're using, watercolor, acrylic, or oil. They have different viscosities and densities. Hence, they're gonna have texture to them. Now, there's tricks to make things smoother and smoother and smoother as you become an advanced artist, but as you're starting out, things aren't as smooth as you think. That's because you are looking at your painting from three, six, or nine inches away. I want you to start looking at your paintings from three feet, six feet, or nine feet away because you'll stop looking at the imperfections and you'll see your artwork for what it is, a beautiful masterpiece that you put a lot of time and effort into. And then you'll see those beautiful blending of colors. Motivational speech done but I just wanna let you know that too many people get themselves down when they don't get beautiful blending of colors because they're sitting this close to the painting when you really shouldn't 
B. If you want to know how to apply what we just did here to other paintings like beautiful sunsets, or you want to start making a full landscape, I'm going to put a couple of videos over to my side that's going to help you become a bigger and better painter. So go watch those videos because I really need the watch time. And if you want to help me out even more, don't forget to like, subscribe, share this video. And if you plan on buying any painting supplies, use the links down below. Hope this video helped you out, gave you clarity, maybe a little bit of motivation, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care, and of course, peace.